What is up guys? All right, so I am in the truck, headed over to Lewis's house to go work on the E30. We're gonna do some welding today. Um, so the radiator mount on there um, needs to be welded up so we can put a bushing on it and then work on the top side later. The way I'm doing it is right now, one of the, so the bottom of the radiator has two pegs and one peg goes in the stock location and the other one is welded onto a gap and then uh, probably drill through it and isolate it with some rubber or whatever so it doesn't bounce around. I've been up to some other stuff. We're almost finished with the storage locker or the shop, if you will. Um, I'll play that clip now of us finishing the workbench. Yo, is that a mag capacity California legal? Uh, yeah, it is. It's actually semi fully automatic. And I also messed up last time I was here. I was trying to do uh, test the purge without any power and I kind of gassed myself out. So I'll play that clip now. Oh God. And yeah, it was an interesting experience. I was a dumbass. Um, I forgot to open the line on the purge to test the placement more or less and ended up opening it at the bottle because that was hand tight enough. I'm just a dumbass, I'm sorry, but I thought it was funny and I thought I'd show it. So, like I said, headed over to Aaron's house, or Aaron and Lewis's house where Aaron's gonna lay down some beats on the E30 and uh, it's gonna be a good time. That being said, we put the other header on um, the driver's side and that was a huge pain in the ass. That probably took me about an hour or so. Not fun. So I discovered that the steering shaft goes through the header, which I had to disconnect the steering shaft and uh, rock the engine up to one side. If you watch the Sicky video, um, they don't really say that but you can notice it, and it was one of those things that I didn't really notice until I went back and looked at it. So keep that in mind if you're gonna do this. You need to put the driver's side header on before you put the steering shaft on. So I learned from my mistake on that, and we should be good now. So in about a week, the E30 is gonna come back to the shop, gonna pull the motor out, gonna do the low profile starter from Siki as well as uh, change out the flex plate with an eBay flywheel. It's gonna chatter, I don't really care. I'm just trying to get this car going as fast as I can. Transmission is coming up and then uh, should be pretty much done. Wiring is a good portion of the way there. Um, I keep saying, um, I really need to get out of that habit, but we're getting there. So I'll cut it from here and uh, we'll go to Lewis's and I'll start back up when I get there. Peace. Their header's on, like I said, and then we have the issues of the mounts. And then we've got this little bad boy down here, which is gonna bridge between these two. And that way the radiator can sit flush, space out this left one over here, and um, put a little bushing down here, isolate it. And uh, yeah, radiator should be done. Got more parts on the way to finish the radiator hose. Got a water temp gauge, and then um, I got a little bend or a sensor housing so that way we can measure water temperature. We got our uh, in house welder, one welding god. That's right. About to lay down some poop welds. Some beads. Some beads, bro? Some beads, dog. Know about it. We also have our uh, resident Mexican doing yard work. Lewis, how do you feel about these trees? I miss them. Yeah, me too. It's so damn bright. Yeah. Hey, Lewis. You been uh, doing stuff around here? No, I have not. That's not mine. Okay. Has someone else? 
Thanks. What you thinking? I'm thinking I'm gonna put some scribe marks on this thing so I can cut it up and then tack it in place. I like the way you think. <laughs> Cause I sure as hell don't know what I'm doing when it comes to welding. Damn, she ugly. I've also been thinking about getting a different intake manifold because this one seems like a pain in the ass, but it's already on there. It's gonna come back off so I can use the lift plate and pull it out. Um, but I am missing one of the ports back here. That was me, don't worry. No, I don't. Um, one of these vacuum plugs. I haven't been able to source one, so that's always fun. And uh, yeah, it was a used manifold, so it was missing some things, but we'll get there. Is he? Yeah. Nice. I'm so ready for winter. Dude, it's so goddamn hot. It's fucking global warming bullshit. Yeah? All the recordings? All of it. You gotta get that B-roll. Yeah. Never fuck with a man in a fake bandana. Fake bandana? I see that hat. It's a welding back. cap. Welding cap? Yeah. With some aloha flowers? Some aloha flowers. You gonna get laid, bro? <laughs> I'm gonna leave it on for a minute. I don't have enough power. Yeah, I got Get you. A point on there. Yo, since I'm a bitch, we gotta cheers. You know, I only drink these seltzers <laughs> since I'm trying gotta to lose weight. I'm trying to lose that weight, brother. Not. <laughs> I know. You gotta work hard for that beer belly. Oh. Mm. I think these things are only making me sweat more because alcohol. Well, you know, it's the price you gotta pay to stay sane. All right, so we got the feeler gauge. So what do you do when you have two different thicknesses of metal as far as voltage? Well, it's amperage that you're actually adjusting. Yeah. Voltage is direct, but... Um, what do you mean by direct? Well, so there's direct voltage, and there's... Um, alternating current. Okay. So alternating current is for AC, and it's for aluminum welding or using most mostly so, aluminum you can use it on steel though so you go with the lower one or the material yeah, you definitely the go with the lower one you go with the lower 
lowest thickness metal that you're working with. So this says it's a 15 gauge, but there's still paint on it, so it's probably like a 16 or a 17. We'll find out. Hell yeah. Lewis. Yeah. Is the Schwagen done yet? Not ever. Not ever? Not ever. Come show your beautiful vase to my subscribers and random people that probably won't look at this video for more than 30 seconds. The people who aren't going to look at me for more than 30 seconds. It's not done yet. The damn air compressor taking five fucking years. Are you giving my car a hug? No, I'm just leaning on it for support. Oh, I'll give you support. And vestitos. That's what I want. Yes, that's it's where about you the right size. How big is that? Uh, yeah, all right. Aaron, did you break it? No. Then. I'm just curious why my braiding tool has barring all over in it. Is it a brand new tool? Where'd you get it? Harbor Freight. Yeah, it's not brand new. <laughs> <laughs> you know that shit got turned in? Someone used it once and then took it back. Yeah, he was just like, I don't actually. <laughs> Ground. Are you gonna get the underside? Yeah. Of this? No. You don't need both. Uh, it's got the ground strap on it. Yeah. Across. Yeah, that one's got it. So it connects both of them. Jewel, yeah. bruh. Jewel, bruh. Jewel, bruh. Lewis, what are you doing? I'm trying to see if I can put this in. Oh, all right. Uh, Good no. work. It don't work like that. The header's a bit line. Kind of, right? Yeah. It's all right. It's got to come out anyways. Yeah, no. The whole thing's got to come out. It's just like a hair off. I got my lift. I think with the motor tilt, like with it where it's supposed to be, it'll be fucking fine. <laughs> I found the right header bolts. They're too, They're long. too long. Oh really? Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. So, Sicky makes a low profile starter that'll like give like the header plenty of room around the starter. Uh huh. And then I just gotta buy an eBay flex you plate. That? That eBay flex headers? plate. Yeah. What? The yeah, header? The yeah. So I just so need the right? starter, and then once I pull it out, I'll go ahead and throw on the flex plate and all that. Need a flex plate. Or not flex plate, a uh, flywheel. There we go. That one. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking, my friend, my friend was uh, talking to me. He's doing an LS swap and an S10, and I was like, let me save you a lot of money now that I have fucked up and spent a lot of money, like... <laughs> <laughs> this is why I did. Do <laughs> yeah. I have learned the easy way. Please listen to me. He wants to put a TH400. I'm like, yo, it's an S10. Grab a 4L60 and Whoa. forget about it. Yeah. It's light as fuck. You're not going to have all neutrals. Yeah, unless he has, like, 600 wheels. But, you know, he's going to start... He wants to run, like, an 8 or 9 in the 8th mile. And I was like... You can do that with a 4L60, like... Yeah. If like, the truck's like... Yeah, it's an S10. Small tires, though. Big tire if it hooks the thing like... That's a different... <laughs> that's a different story. <laughs> but they're 200 bucks from Pick and Pull, so... Yeah, they were cheap. I was like, dude, listen to me. Go to Pick and Pull, bring a cutoff wheel, which I have, and then cut out the fucking seat belt, and boom, you got your lift kit, like, for the engine. <laughs> Oh, you cut out the seat belts and use that as a strap. You like uh, tie it to the cutoff header, like in between one of the runners, and it's strong enough to lift it up. Um, what did the eighty do? What? The eighty. Four L eighty. That was just on the heavier like duty trucks. In yeah, on um, some of the bigger trucks. You came on the gas. Like and the Cadillacs. And the Cadillacs. And the Escalades. Yeah. 
I got the row, what is I'm it, row 52? Yeah. I got the notifications for any ca or Escalade that rolls in. I was like, I need a six liter. Dude, literally, I got the notification and I was working for the next two days. I went in, both of the engines and tr transmissions were gone. I was like, fuck, y'all work fast. Like, yeah, dude. Everything if you saw it all like this part right yeah, here, you just got. Yeah, you don't have to remove the intake yeah. manifold, and you save yourself money on gaskets. Yeah, I was like, and I was like, wow. Yeah, my favorite thing is when you walk in the yard and you see someone pull a four L eighty. And they leave the engine just like kind of lifted. It's like, well, I'll spend two hundred dollars. Dude, 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 most of the time they just leave them strapped up, and like you literally just have to pull it off. Yeah. And it's like, well, I just got four hundred bucks. the whole time I was in the garage and it was fine. Yeah, I'm staying this bike because you don't have a back bridge system. The back bridge don't have anything to do with how much I was putting out in the front. Yes, it does because if you have a back bridge, you have positive pressure. Backs out of the car. But there's So it doesn't matter how much, well, how much gas you're putting in there, you're going to use less gas if you're not back bridging. Because if you don't have positive pressure... But it's not pressure, going through the same line. What? You'd have two... Things. Yo, Andrew, what's up? You have what? Some interesting information you might not know. Yo, say hi to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Alright, hold on, let me stop recording real quick. They're twist off. Are they? Sure about that? Ah, uh, yeah, pretty much. About to lay some fat beads, brother. Hell yeah, brother. Right one. And then, yeah. I don't have to tell you how to do your job. Is it done yet? Yeah. Watch his beer. Don't be like me. Are you welding hot enough? No. He's turning it up. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Open up. Yeah, boy. My wheel. Shit. You're not even gonna pick it up. You're just gonna leave it there. Yeah, All right. If you scratch the face, um, you're gonna be doing some free welding. It's not like, yeah. Very like, fucking yeah. MIG welding that we do. Oh, no, 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 not. What, quiet? Yeah. That pedal operation with your knees is pretty fucking dope.
I don't give a fuck how it looks. It'll do though. As long as it works. <laughs>